Welcome to Michael Potts Photography, the story behind the photograph. In this video, I would like to tell you the story of a photograph I took of this male lion at the Zamanga Private Game Reserve in Northern KwaZulu-Natal. Zamanga is actually quite a remarkable reserve. It was bought by Carl Senecal in 1998. At the time, it was this very badly managed, very overpoached little reserve. Carl and his team have managed to grow the reserve to 70 square kilometers in size. They've reintroduced over 80 species of mammals, and they've sighted over 400 different species of birds. This is a real environmental success story, and it's great that it's a park that is so, so photographically focused. They've created a number of photographic hides. These are places that you can go and observe the animals in very, very close quarters, but not disturbing the animals in any way whatsoever. For example, they've built a hide in a lagoon, and this allows you to photograph water birds at eye level. The water birds are completely oblivious to you being there, and they're carrying on with their normal behavior. So this is a wonderful opportunity to get really close to animals and not impact what they're doing. exciting thing about this park is that the rangers are such passionate photographers that whenever you come to a sighting they're always thinking about how the image is going to be best composed. They also give you a lot of advice so if you're a beginner they'll help you with all of the settings that you need on your camera. One afternoon we were following a pair of female cheetah. We thought that they might be going to hunt. They hadn't eaten for some time and they looked pretty active. We followed them for about two hours and we saw them getting close to a large herd of antelope and we thought that this would be a great opportunity to watch one of the most incredible spectacles in nature, cheetahs hunting in the wild. Unlike the other big cats, the lions and the leopards, cheetahs tend to do all of their hunting during the day. Here they can use their explosive speed to overwhelm their prey. However, it turned out on this day, our two cheetahs weren't that interested in food. And instead, as the sun set, they lay down to rest. We realized there'll be no hunting today, so our ranger drove the Land Rover off to a nice open space. We all got out and we had a few whiskeys and chatted about the day. All of a sudden, I look up and about 200 meters away, there right in the open was this massive male lion just staring at us. I quietly and calmly let everyone else know what I'd just seen, and they all rushed to the Land Rover to grab their cameras and start photographing. No one actually got inside the Land Rover. In all honesty, I'm pretty sure the lion wasn't going to attack us. Had he thought we were prey, we probably wouldn't have seen him until it was too late. Once we got into the vehicle, we decided to follow him. He was just beginning his nightly activity. Lions being nocturnal really start to become active in the evening. During the day, they spend most of their time lolling around and relaxing, but it's at night they become hunters. Here we had one single male by himself. Often you see lions congregate together in prides, where you'd have one or two dominant males with a large number of females. In this case, this guy had to do everything on his own. This is a young male lion. He probably weighs about 190 kilograms. When he's fully mature, that could go up to as much as 225 kilograms. You can see that he's quite young by, by looking at his mane. It's not yet fully developed. As he gets older, his mane will get darker and darker. Like all the big cats, lions don't need to hunt every day. But once they do, they can eat a vast amount of food. A lion can eat up to 40 kilograms of food, or, or roughly a quarter of its body weight. As the lion walked, he made his way to this ridge. And here he was able to observe the bush below him, looking for any signs of prey. Here we were able to get some amazing photographs of the lion. Our ranger managed to get us into a really good spot, so we were able to shoot up at the lion. He also gave us some really good advice, such as adjusting the white balance. This is something I don't normally do. I tend to do all of my color correction in post-production, but if you can, it's better to do as much in the camera as you possibly can. Changing the white balance really helped enhance the blues of the sky and made the yellow of the lion pop. We were fortunate to be able to follow the lion for, for quite some time. It was definitely long enough for me to start playing around with some long exposures. And here I'm shooting at a third of a second. I'm holding the camera still on the line for the majority of that. And then at the last moment, intentionally moving the camera away. And that creates a sort of ghosting effect. As he was walking, I managed to get this profile picture, which I think is my favorite of the collection. 
This is what it looked like straight out of the camera. Uh, here I'm shooting with a Nikon Z9. I'm using a Sigma 150 to 600 mm lens. I've set my exposure bias to minus a third. I generally underexpose my photographs. This allows me to have a little bit lower ISO or, or a slightly faster shutter speed. And I can always bring the colors back in post-production. Here, my shutter speed is set to 1 over 400. This is probably a little bit slow for this lens, but I am shooting on a monopod and I'm holding the camera incredibly still. F-stop set to 6.3. This is the widest aperture the lens does at 400 millimeters. I'm shooting at ISO 6400. The camera does go higher than that, but I feel that once you go beyond this, the photograph becomes almost unusable. So I'm at the extremes of what the camera can do comfortably, but it is very, very dark. The only light we have is the torch light from the other vehicle. Here you can see that light catches the edge of his fur and it even highlights a little fly. As you can see, the photograph coming out of the camera is quite dull, it, it's quite dark. So the first thing I did was go into Lightroom and apply a very generic general preset. Now this is kind of my starting point for most photographs. It reduces the noise, opens up the shadows, adds a little bit of clarity, and on top of that, I lightened the image. The next step was to reduce the amount of noise in the picture. Here I use Topaz Lab's denoising tool. This is a cunning addition to Lightroom and it lets you keep the image sharp where it needs to be sharp and it removes the unwanted noise and, and artifacts. I then readjusted the exposure level to the level that I wanted the lightest part of the image to be. And that made the rest of the image quite dark, but at this stage that's okay. I then used a brushing tool to bring back some of the details, painting light back into the image. This is quite a long process, but it gives you quite a lot of control on what parts of the photograph you want to have seen. I've also reduced a little bit of the clarity on parts of his fur, but I've highlighted again in others. This gives a little bit more contrast to the image. I've enhanced the eye and I've adjusted the color balance where it wasn't quite right. There was a little bit of magenta coming into the image, so I've reduced that and added a little bit more yellow, a bit more golden color to it. Throughout this process, I'm busy lightening the subject, increasing the drama, and what you end up with is this lovely portrait of a young male lion on the prowl. Uh, thank you for watching this, the story behind the photograph. I, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe. If there's any other photographs you'd like me to discuss, please do let me know as well. And I look forward to seeing you again at the next one. Goodbye.